Hello again, I am Blunty and I am not using a green screen at the moment. I am using the NVIDIA Broadcast Camera function. It's a piece of software teamed up with a recent NVIDIA card that does algorithmic things to figure out what's person and what's background and deletes the background and can either replace it with a still image like you're seeing here or you can also just remove the background altogether. So if you're using a piece of software like OBS, like I'm using, you can replace the background with a video feed, uh, or you can just have it blank if you like. It also has a feature where it can blur the background of your web camera. I'm not using a web camera. I'm using a proper camera. So my background is already blurry. So let me turn off the artificial blur. Yeah, so it hardly makes any difference there. So I might plug in a proper old fashioned USB webcam later and see how that feature works. But for now, I wanted to take a poke around at the software because they've just released version 1.1, which promises a few significant upgrades. Now the whole background replacement thing, pretend green screen thing, uh, never really appealed to me that much because it didn't work very well. But I don't know whether you're looking at this, but as far as I'm concerned, it seems to be doing quite a good job. So. Before we talk about the new version, let's roll back to the old version and get a baseline about where it was. Hi, I'm Blunty from earlier this exact same day recording some test footage of the software as it exists in its 1.0 point whatever 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 version before the 1.1 update so I have a point of comparison. Over here, no wait, <laughs> over, why is that so hard to do? It's weird. Over here. Uh, we have the software interface itself. As you can see, I've got no camera effects turned on yet. And the number you can see right there is the CPU utilization. So uh, I'm already using a, a proper camera, not a web camera uh, with a nice fast lens on it. So my background is naturally blurry. So when we turn on the artificial blur, you're not going to see much of a difference, uh, even with the slider maxed out here. But uh, if we use background replacement, as you can see there now, this is kind of an ideal situation. I've got very good lighting. I'm, I'm quite separated from the background. The background is very, very different colors to what I am here. And that's all very, very deliberate. Um, but as you can see, if I do this, uh, actually it's not too and too, but there we go. There's some, there's some artifacting right there under the chair. It's, it's not perfect. Certainly not a replacement for a properly set up green screen. If what you want is a sort of high polished professional looking thing, but if you're just dicking around in, I don't know, zoom calls and things like that, I guess, uh, it gets the job done fine, but yeah, it's not something I would generally use as a content creator as it were, which is kind of partially what they're aiming at here. Just sort of get your foot in the door nice and early without having to learn what you're doing basically. So let's switch over now to the background removal, exact same technology, except that it just makes the background transparent. So I can put my own backgrounds back there, uh, including video backgrounds using OBS as I would a proper green screen technique. But again, nothing really changes about sort of how it works. So you still get that weird artifacting and things like that. But fair enough, it works good enough for most people and certainly about equivalent to the quality that most people who don't bother learning what they're doing when it comes to setting up a green screen will get anyway with sort of bits and pieces of artifacts. You're not really fooling anyone. But then again, you know, no one's really thinking you're on a Hollywood stage with, with sort of dramatic backgrounds and things like that. So let's upgrade and see what the difference is. Okay, upgrade done, we're at version 1.1. We have a couple of different modes now for the camera feature. It's still listed as being in beta, so they're still working on it as it were. We're in quality mode right now. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a little bit less glitchy. I mean, it's still a bit of artifacting here and there when things get quite tough and sort of in the, in the little hollow area here, it gets very sort of tough for an algorithm to figure out what's me and what's chair and things like that. But it's doing surprisingly well and sort of, the halo around my head and everything, so long as my hand doesn't go near it. Oh, oh that messed it up. Um, it's a little bit better behaved. And I would be a little more confident about using this in general. So let's switch over to background removal now, and we should be getting basically exactly the same result. Because again, same algorithm, it's just having a transparent background instead of replacing it with a picture in the app itself. So I can use my moving background here, which is a bit more visually interesting. Well, slightly anyway. Which one do you like best? Leave a comment in the down below. <laughs> While you're there, thumb, comment, sub, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, the upgrade is significantly better in quality mode. Switch over to performance. And yeah, you can instantly see performance mode. It starts, yeah, a few more. So it looks like performance mode is is basically what the standard mode was in the previous version of the software. So it's not like quality mode is the standard mode and they've made a cheaper version for quality mode. Uh, for performance mode, sorry. So now we're looking at GPU utilization where it's sort of 40% ish. I'm also using 
the video encoder on the GPU to encode the recording that you're now watching, just as I do when I live stream. So let's pump up the quality again and see if that makes a difference. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so there's another 5 to 8%-ish boost between quality and performance. Oh, sweet baby jeebus. This is why I don't use a regular USB web camera. And this is why I don't recommend anybody anywhere does for any kind of content creation because they are awful when you can have a proper and real camera for relatively cheap if you're even remotely serious about your content. This is the Razer web camera. I forget the actual name of it, but I've never particularly liked it, but it is slightly better to deal with than the Logitech uh, C920, one of the other very popular web camera choices because, you know what, don't even get me started on, on Logitech's software issues. The point being, this is an average, popular, easy to get web camera. So let's try the background blur because this, this looks a lot less classy than what we we're dealing with, doesn't it? And, ooh, there we go. So let's have a look for artifacting. Okay, so yeah, because it's not cutting out the background, when we get the artifacting, all that happens is the bits that would sort of freak out just go blurry instead. Oh, there we go. There's a good example of it. So that's actually reasonably subtle. To, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Too used to looking at that one. That's the one I'm looking at right now. So yeah, that's a reasonably decent uh, option to use if you are using a webcam. I mean, there's still tons of grain and the color is bad. My skin tone looks off. I've done the best I can with this camera. Just, just, just This is the best it gets with this particular camera. So let's have a look at the background replacement now. And yeah, again, you're getting that sort of, we are in quality mode again, so we're not in the cheapo performance mode. Uh, but again, you're seeing all kinds of issues and because we're dealing with a lower resolution uh, when I was dealing with the other camera I was using a 4k source uh, only recording in 1080p but 4k source so I had a lot more detail for the app to work with uh, but as you can see here um, yeah the lower quality your camera source to begin with there's only there's only so much software can can actually do to fix things let's go to background removal and there we go and you'll be seeing the same sort of things again when it gets a bit hard to deal with uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is working OK. If it's what you have, fine. But I wouldn't. Look at me, look at me. Alrighty, so what do I actually think about this? Well, this 1.1 version, I probably would use in lieu of a green screen if I couldn't be bothered setting up the green screen, because it is a bit of a faff. I mean, even if you have one of the Elgato rollout green screens, which I do, and they're fantastically useful, but whether or not using something fancy and bespoke like the Elgato green screen thing, or just some scraps of green stuff you bought at a fabric store, which I still do from time to time, because the Elgato product is only so wide, but, and sometimes I need a bigger green screen than one that can provide. The key to getting a good green screen effect is lighting, and it can be quite tricky at times, especially if you're working with limited space. If you can't get a lot of distance between you and the green screen behind you, reflected uh, light off that green screen onto the back of your head can cause all sorts of issues when you're sort of dealing with your hair and stuff like that, and you have to have extra lights, and it can be a reasonably uh, expensive situation to go into if you're just using it every now and again. And if you're using it every now and again, this is a perfectly adequate substitute for that, depending on the level of quality and polish you want your content to have. If you're just starting out, you haven't, uh, you know, you just don't have the money or, or you don't know whether it's worth investing in the big fancy equipment yet. You don't know whether you're going to be successful enough to bother with doing that, for example. This is a nice and easy cheat around it. So while this, uh, the camera portion at least, is still listed as being in beta, they're still working on it, they're still tinkering with it. At this point, I would consider it good enough for an average uh, you know, content creator to at least give a go if they're looking for that green screen effect or background placement effect or just faking the background blur a bit because you've got a crappy web camera or something. It is at least a stopgap measure so you can play with that kind of thing to see if that suits the kind of content that you want to make and see if it fits in with your style, your presentation, the aesthetic you're shooting for. It lets you play with that stuff without having to invest in the green screen, the extra lighting and learning what you're doing. Because again, using a green screen requires some base level knowledge about how to set it up physically and how to set it up uh, in the software to get the best result out of it. So you're not dealing with the same kind of artifacting you can get out of software like this. Uh, let's go back into performance mode so we exaggerate the artifacts. Uh, yeah, I mean, a poorly set up green screen doesn't look quite this bad but there's still a lot of artifacting that's just as distracting as that. 
uh, can be. So, yeah, I'm personally quite excited to see what happens with this software and what features it gets once it's officially out of beta, because, yeah, it's starting to, starting to reach that level where it's pretty, pretty rock solid. I might give it a go in a future stream, just do a several hours. Maybe I'll do it on the weekend. My PlayStation 5 should be arriving today, actually. So next stream on Friday, twitch.tv slash blunt if you haven't been there before. Uh, we'll be doing some PlayStation 5 streams. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try the fake green screen for that stream. Anyway, I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. Thank you as always to the patrons floating up above there. Your above and beyond support is fantastic. Thank you ever so much for that. Uh, and I hope the rest of you found this interesting and or useful. Catch you next time.